Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cat Lady. We are now in chapter 2 and Susan has awoken in the hospital after her suicide attempt and we're talking with Liz, one of our nurses. While talking to Liz, there's a few dialogue options that we're going to explore. If you're interested in an achievement later, basically what we want to do is we want to be friendly and we want to find out as much as we can about Liz. So we left off last time with Susan having the bad dream about being burned alive. Liz has come in and asked us if it was a bad dream. So rather than ignoring her or being quiet about it, let's just confront in her completely and kind of confide in her and let her know what's going on. Yeah, a really bad one. I knew it. I could see as soon as I came in the room that you were having a nightmare. I guess I shouldn't have woken you up. What was it about? I was burnt alive. Actually, it reminds me of something that happened the other day. There was this woman on the emergency unit, and she really wanted to smoke, you know? But they wouldn't let her, of course. She wasn't well at all, not just injured, but not right in the head. She was on 10 litres of oxygen, through the face mask. She had to stay in bed, she was told. But she wouldn't listen, of course, and as soon as they'd left, she lit up a fag. The whole room went up in flames, and so did she. I guess you didn't really want to know that, did you? That's just me and my big gob. Typical. I never know when to shut up. So there's going to be a question later on about that story, so just remember that. And fun fact, I work in healthcare and I actually had a patient once where that exact thing happened. He was smoking with oxygen and it blew up in his face. But anyways, now that we have that little tidbit, let's ask Liz a little bit more about herself. What was your name again? I forgot to introduce myself, didn't I? I always do that. So sorry, Susan. My name is Elizabeth. But you can call me Liz, like everyone else. You're here a lot. Every time I open my eyes, I see you. They make auxiliaries do crazy hours here. Seriously, I feel like I've got no life sometimes. I'll be here till the morning. To be honest, I keep coming here to hide. Please don't give me away. I just want to rest my legs for two minutes, that's all. Ah, oh, she seems... sweet. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... All of a sudden, I was on the field of barley. It was great at first. I felt happy. I was free. But it soon got worse. There was this tunnel, but there was no light at the end of it, only darkness. Then I got lost in the woods. There was my dead body hanged on the tree, a burning car, and a crow, and a deer. I heard something behind the trees, but I didn't dare to look. Then I found the house. The old woman who lived there, I think she was death. Or maybe she was the devil, I'm not sure. She said they call her the Queen of Maggots. She said I should go back, gave me another chance. And so, here I am. Weird dream, eh? Maybe it wasn't a dream. I really believe in that sort of stuff. It's not impossible. It felt real, but it was just a dream. Can you now tell me who found me and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why do you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? 
I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied. It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. Liz probably thinks that we are completely insane. I think if I was Liz, I would probably be thinking that too, but maybe she likes the conversation. How do I know? Uh, let's ask how long we've been here. How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at 7 in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit, where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. I call it Die Ward, because all the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. Oh, well doesn't that sound lovely? It's also interesting to note that the doctor had said we have no brain damage, all of our organs are fine. But I mean, if your heart stops for a full minute, I mean, you would think that would cause some damage or having your stomach full of sedatives or whatever, but I guess that's good news. When are they going to let me go home? When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you, and he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. Trust no one. I think that Dr. X was the guy we were talking to earlier. So we have a few options here. Let's first talk about Liz to learn a couple more facts that we should memorize. Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. You're a real nurse, not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. So there's three things you want to remember from your chat with Liz. The first is the smoking incident. The second is that one of her roommates is a stripper. And the third is that she was dumped on Valentine's Day. That is going to come into play a little bit later. And at this point, you can either pursue these other two options or you can just say, I'm tired, uh, let me go to bed. But let's go ahead and ask about Dr. X. Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman, but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you. But Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some... problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients. He doesn't care. As long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew, Linda. I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. 
Well, she left, and I never saw her again. Now, why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet he'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells... funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh. Thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. So all the things that Liz has told us is going to become a little bit more clear later on. Maybe he's just a good doctor if people can open up to him. Who knows? Now Susan claims she doesn't have a daughter, so the question is who the heck was in her apartment and who was the one who saved her life? I don't know. Did you see this daughter of mine? No, sorry Susan. Apparently she came in the ambulance with you, but then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? Do I really have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. Or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. Hmm. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? Maybe. Liz strikes me as the type who is very naive and has a kind of a very overactive <laughs> imagination, but I'm sure Susan, being the very lonely person that she is, doesn't really mind, you know, chatting with Liz. So it's been nice, but uh, I'm going to go to sleep now. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? Very, very interesting warning from Liz there. We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. So here we are back with Dr. X, and we're going to be able to start our psychological evaluation. This is basically the point where we had started the chapter earlier. Susan just has to answer a few questions before she can go home. I think I'm going to save that for the next video, though. So after our dialogue with Liz, we will now have our next conversation with Dr. X. Like I said, the game is very dialogue heavy, but I personally find it all to be very, very interesting and hopefully you guys do too. Thank you all so very much for watching and I hope that I will see you next time.